everybody, it's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today as I talk about my favourite books of 2022. So we finally, finally reached the end of my version of Bookmas and I'm going to finish up by talking about my favourite books of 2022. So before we get started, I'm going to direct you to two videos. The first one is my book awards video that I put up last Saturday. That is a video where I talk about my favorites of different genres, um, my most surprising, my most disappointing. So you will get a different range of books if you go over and watch that video. I had a lot of fun making that one, so I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a watch and hopefully enjoyed it as well. The other video that I'm going to direct you to is my mid-year favourite books of the year so far video. In that video I, as the name suggests, talk about my favourite books for the first six months of the year. Now, what I did in that video is talk about my rating system and talk about the fact that I had some books that I technically would rate slightly higher than some other books but the other book might still be a book that I loved that I couldn't stop thinking about that had more of an impact on me and so that happened for the first three months of the year I had sort of dual favorites later in the year it stopped happening so much and I started having books that the impact was with the book that I ended up giving a higher rating to I'm not sure if that just means that I got more used to the rating system I have been using G from Book Roast Call Pile. However, I have actually changed it a little bit. So I will link her 2023 version that she put up recently. So you can go and have a look at that if you haven't looked at it before. But it's a way of rating. Sorry, I've got the computer here. So it's a way of rating that takes into account different aspects of the story. That's what G has done. She's done, she made a spreadsheet. She you can use it for free and it's just a way of figuring out ratings, which is absolutely amazing. So I have done this in monthly rather than my top 10 favorite books of all of the year. So it'll be 12 books. And then I, like I said, I will direct you to that other video where you can see some of my thoughts on some of the books that I had as kind of equal favorites. And then I will have a couple of honorable mentions as well. So I have gone ahead and had a bit of a think about well which book did I actually do I still actually think of as a book that I loved and would consider a favorite particularly given it's the first three months of the year. So yeah that's what we're going to do. I hope that all makes sense. Sorry it's a little bit rambly but that's apparently how it goes today. <laughs> okay so my favourite book that I read in January was Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. This is also my favourite historical fiction of the year. So like I said before, if you go to watch my book awards, you'll see that there as well. This is, as I just said, a historical fiction. It's about the creation of the first Oxford English Dictionary. We follow the main character, whose name I've completely forgotten, and she is the child of one of the people who's helping to put the dictionary together. I apologize if you can hear that. That is Pistachio trying to tell me that she needs to come in. But she doesn't really. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so she is the child of one of the men who is in charge and she doesn't have a mother so she comes in to work with him and then she kind of crawls around on the floor of the scriptorium as they call it. People are sending in what they're calling little scripts which are little um, bits of paper. Some of them get dropped on the floor, some by accident, some intentionally. Not all of the, book, the words that get sent to them are included in the dictionary. So the book is about this girl growing up as a woman and collecting all of these words and then starting to put together her own dictionary and starting to kind of realize that some of these words that are either forgotten or deliberately left out, it's because they are considered, that they're not considered learned words, they're um, you have to have examples of it being written and they're used in speech and oftentimes they are lower socioeconomic words or their words that women use that aren't then in scholarly writing or recorded physically in any way. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. I love the writing style. The character was fantastic and definitely was my favorite book of January. So February, my favorite book was After Story by Larissa Berent. 
This one kind of straddles the line between literary fiction and contemporary fiction. So we follow Jasmine and Jasmine is an indigenous woman who lived in quite a sort of impoverished area of Australia when she was younger and her older sister went missing one night after a party. So there's been a lot of trauma surrounding that and how it affected the family. And she's not really as close to her family, particularly her mother, as she would like to be. She has gone off to university and studied literature, English literature, and she's, I think, the only family, me family member or one of the only family members who has been to university. She loves Victorian English literature and she has booked herself on a holiday to go on a kind of tour of the UK to go to a bunch of different important literary sites. And she decides to take her mother along with her and it's about their relationship, it's about them trying to kind of build their relationship back up again and how it's affected and yeah I really enjoyed it. I love Larissa Brandt's writing style. This is the third book I've read from her. The second fiction, the other book was non-fiction and I've loved everything I've read from her. I think she has a fantastic writing style and I find it really interesting what she writes about. She's an indigenous Australian author. She has a very different perspective and experience than what I do, um, which I just find really interesting and I'm really glad to be getting that perspective. So yeah, absolutely loved it, thought it was fantastic. Also, it's absolutely beautiful, as was The Dictionary of Lost Words. Then for March, my favourite book was The Murder of Mary Russell by Laurie R. King. So I believe this is the 12th or 13th book in a series, which I have been slowly making my way through for, it feels like probably half my life. <laughs> So I constantly say that this series, which is the Mary Russell series, is one of my favourite series of all time, and yet I haven't finished it. I think I have another two books that I need to read to be able to complete the series. This book is, like I said, the 12th or 13th book in the series, so I'm not going to talk about what the book is about, but I'll let you know that the series as a whole follows Mary Russell. Mary Russell, as a young girl, she was like 11 or something like that, is orphaned and is sent to live with an aunt in Sussex in the UK. One day she is reading a book and walking through the Sussex Downs at the same time, not really watching where she's going, and she literally runs into Sherlock Holmes, a retired detective, sort of retired. They have a conversation and throughout the course of this conversation he realises how observant and intelligent she is, and then he takes it upon himself to start teaching her to become a detective. And mysteries go from there so it's a historical mystery series and I love them and yeah The Murder of Mary Russell was my favorite book for March. For April I know I said that I was going to pick one book but I'm having a difficult time separating them and that is because my favorite books that I read in April were the four volumes that are currently out of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So I feel like given that they are reasonably short and reasonably quick to get through and they're all one series, you might forgive me for having four books, but the Heartstopper series was my favourite books that I read in April. So I feel like most people probably know what this book is. these books are about, but we follow Nick and Charlie who are high school students and they meet in homeroom one day and they form a friendship which blossoms into a romance. It is very wholesome, it is very sweet, the characters are fantastically well written, there's a lot of rep, particularly LGBTQIA plus rep, but rep across the board and I just think that they're fantastic so they were my favourite books for April. For May my favourite book was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I loved this book so much. This is a Greek mythology retelling. We follow Patroclus, who is the consort, friend of Achilles. They are in a relationship um, and we see that relationship develop, but it's foreboding. They're not supposed to be in the relationship, so it's very secret or it tries to be. The book is just so sad, it's so well written. I love the way that she wrote Patroclus, in particular it's from his point of view. I love getting more of Patroclus' story. In the Iliad, which this is obviously taking a lot from, we see Patroclus and Achilles, we see their relationship, but we don't spend a lot of time with Patroclus. So it was really cool to get his story and see his perspective. And yeah, I just thought it was fantastic. I love Madeline Miller's writing style. I love 
everything I've read from her, I have read, I think I've read all three, all of the books she's published. I've read Circe, I've read Galatea, which is a tiny little 40 something pages, and I've read The Song of Achilles, and all of them were absolutely fantastic. I think she's an amazing author, and I'm really excited to read anything else that she writes. But yeah, my favourite book for, did I say May? I did say May, it was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. In June, my favourite book of June was The Ten Thousand Dollars of January by Alex E. Harrow. This came up as my favourite fantasy in my book awards that I've referred to a few times now. And yeah, I just absolutely love this book. I was surprised by how much I loved it, which I think goes some way to explaining why I loved it so much, if that makes sense. Pleasantly surprised. It is a little bit hard to explain, but basically we follow January, and January is a ward to someone who travels around the world and collects artifacts. Her father does a lot of work collecting artifacts, so he's left January in the care of this man. And then January, as she grows up, she realises there's some other stuff going on, but she doesn't really understand what it is, and then she starts to realise that maybe there's more to the world than she thought and maybe there might even be other worlds and she starts being able to go through doors and that's all I'm gonna say. Absolutely beautiful, really really well written, I just thought it was so much fun. We read this for my In Real Life book club and a couple of the people that do the book club with us are not particular fantasy readers but they really enjoyed it as well so I really think it's a fantastic entry book but a book that can still be really really loved if you are a fantasy reader so if you're looking to start fantasy um, that might be a good place to start but equally if you have loved fantasy you read a lot of fantasy or some then I would recommend it anyway because I think it's fantastic okay so for July I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to quickly talk about two books because the book that I have put down here as a book that I enjoyed the most and the book that I definitely rated the highest was a book that I've read before. So I feel like I want to also talk about a book that I hadn't read before as well. So the book that I've read before, which I gave the highest rating in the month of July, was A Grave Talent by Laurie R. King. So Laurie R. King is the same author that wrote Murder of Mary Russell. A Grave Talent is from a different series. I think it might be her first series, so I think it's her debut novel. It's contemporary to when it was written, so I think it was written in the 90s, and it follows Kate Martinelli, who is a cop with the San Francisco police, and it follows her as she is newly appointed as a partner to a detective who is she I think she's a new detective and he's not but I just love the way she writes characters I love the way that they're always so intelligent she's obviously an incredibly intelligent person and I just think they're fantastic so yeah that's all I'm going to say about that one but I loved it so much as a reread it was fantastic but the other book that I want to talk about is The No Show by Beth O'Leary which I hadn't read before this is actually not my favorite Beth O'Leary my favorite remains The Flat Share but I did really really enjoy this one again it's a little bit difficult to explain without giving too many spoilers but we follow a variety of different people in relationships but there's something else going on and maybe everything is not quite how you think. I'm just going to say that. I don't know if that's remotely helpful or not, but that's all I'm going to say. I love the Valeria's writing style. I really, really enjoyed this book. Then in August, my favourite book of August is Terra Nullius by Claire G. Coleman. You guys will have heard me talk about this book ad nauseum, so I'm not going to go into any detail about this one again, except to say that it blew me away, it blew my mind, I absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars, ten out of five stars, thought it was fantastic, surprised me no end and I recommend it to anyone. It's just amazing, so yeah, 100% favourite book of August and definitely battling it out for favourite book of the year, I think. Next up in September is another Madeline Miller and that is Galatea which I did mention previously. It was only 40 pages long and still it was my favourite book of September. I just love this woman's writing style, I love the way that she retells myths and puts a human and feminist viewpoint into them. I just think it's fantastic. I'm not going to go into detail about what the book is about because like I said it's like 40 pages long or something like that 
but I highly recommend, particularly if you like Greek mythology retellings, but just if you, just, I think you should read it anyway, it's 40 pages long. If you've never read any Madeline Miller, do yourself a favour, read this book, see what you think, and then, you know, if you like it, hopefully you will, you can go ahead and read some of the others. In October, my favourite book was The Killing Code by Ellie Marnie. So this was a mystery thriller slash spy story. It is historical fiction as well. It's set during the Second World War in America, and it is set amongst the women, well the people, but particularly the women who were employed as code breakers. And yeah, it follows one character in particular, but a group of different women who are code breakers. But one night they discover there might be a serial killer killing people they know. And the police don't seem to think it's a serial killer. They don't seem particularly interested, partly because people who have been killed are women and one of those women is a black woman, so obviously in the 1940s they don't really follow, follow it up. So these group of women decide that they are going to use some of their code breaking skills to try and figure out who is doing the killing. Absolutely loved it, thought it was fantastic, well written. Ellie Marnie researches all of her books so well and that was very clear in this story. And yeah, I just thought it was fantastically written. I loved the characters and just Highly recommend again. If you're a thriller person, spy novel, anything like that, I think you will love it. Give it a go. Early Money is amazing. In November, I read another Laurie R. King book, and Laurie R. King seems to be coming up as my favourite author of the year, which was Island of the Mad, which is the next book along in the Mary Russell series. It was my favourite book of did I say November? I did say November. I loved it so much. I'm not going to go into detail as to why because I've already talked about Laura King twice now, but she's just amazing. Highly recommend. Fantastic author. Fantastic book. And then my favourite book in December was another mystery thriller and that is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. I'm kind of surprised that this is my favourite book of December. A lot of people probably will be as well because I've heard some not great things about it. And I totally understand why people have not liked it or been disappointed by it, but I thought it was incredibly clever, really well written, fantastic insights into trauma and how trauma affects us and changes us. And yeah, I just thought it was amazing. So for those people that don't know, this is the third and final book in the Good Girls Guide to Murder series. So in the first book, Pip is doing a project for school where she is trying to prove that the person who was convicted of killing someone who went to her school is in fact innocent and yeah I'm not going to go into more details. They are a series of thriller, young adult thrillers and I just thought they were fantastic and I love this third one and it was my favourite book of December. <laughs> And then finally, I want to give an honourable mention to a series that I have been reading in 2022. I am still reading. I have the final book, which I think is the final book, the final book that's out anyway, left to read, which I'll be reading in January. And that is the Graceling series by Kristen Cashaw. I have been reading this with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany and Kara from Wild Book Garden. Thank you so much you amazing people who have been joining with us and thank you especially to Kara and Bethany for helping me to co-host. I have been really really enjoying reading this series. I read three of the books before so most of the series has been a reread for me but Sea Sparrow which is the one that came out in November which we are reading in January and then Winter Keep which came out a year or so ago which we read in November were not rereads for me they were new reads. I've absolutely loved the series, I think that Kristen Cashaw is amazing, very underrated author who deserves so much more love and so much more hype because she's an absolutely incredible author. She is doing so many amazing things and talking about some really important topics and doing that incredibly well with so much nuance. Just highly recommend. They are fantasy, but I don't think that if you aren't a fantasy reader that that should hold you off. I feel like they actually read as literary fiction but with fantastical elements, um, but I, I would highly recommend. Like I said, Christian Cashaw is exploring a lot of different topics like trauma, um, 
the outer mass of trauma and tragedy, finding oneself, figuring out who you are, coming to terms with those things, rape culture, just so much amazing stuff. They are young adult and I do think that you could read them as a young adult, but I think it'd be a fantastic one to have as a kind of conversation, maybe in class, but probably more as a between parents and children. So I think that would be really interesting and fantastic. But yeah, absolutely amazing series. Absolutely love that I'm reading them again and for the first time. <laughs> and yeah, just had to give a shout out to that series, which will be my favorite series of the year. Those are all my favorite books that I read throughout the year of 2022. I am super excited to be launching into my reads for 2023. I'm currently reading Babel by Arif Kwan, which I actually anticipate being a favorite book of 2023. So that's a really amazing start. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what some of your favorites from the year were. How do you rate your books? Um, how do you decide what books are favorites? If you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me a heart emoji because we're talking about favorites and things we love. All of my social media details are listed in the description below. So if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.